Now let me ask you a simple question. Here is a fire. We see logs which are burning, releasing heat and light. Once something is on fire, it continues to burn until the fuel is totally exhausted, uh, unless you don't have enough oxygen, in which case it stops because of oxygen starvation. Now here is a simple piece of paper. We know that in order to burn something, you need fuel, which could be this paper. You need oxygen, which is in the air. It's touching and banging into this paper at a molecular level all the time. But you also need kindling, some kind of heat source or a spark. Three things you need to make fire. But here's the question. If this piece of paper is bathed in trillions and trillions of oxygen molecules, O2, banging into it all the time, why doesn't it just spontaneously catch on fire? Why do you have to hold a flame, which is already a piece of something on fire, to begin the burning process? And why, whenever the burning process starts, the paper will continue to burn until the fuel is completely gone, again, assuming you have enough oxygen. In other words, how does fire actually start? And why doesn't this fuel, which is constantly bathed in oxygen, spontaneously catch on fire? Now, I want you to pretend this is an O2 molecule, like it's in the air, two oxygens, and you have electrons being shared. This is an atom of, really, it's hydrogen in my model kit, but you could say it's part of the wood or something, the fuel, in other words. They're banging into each other all the time, but no burning is happening. It only burns when you put a flame or a heat source up there. Why? Because as you make this hotter, the oxygen and the fuel, then they're going to bang into each other with more energy. That's what being hotter and higher temperature means. Eventually, you're going to reach a threshold where you bang into this thing with such force that the chemical bond holding the oxygens together breaks apart and they're temporarily freed. Now, of course, they're going to want to rebond with each other, but if there's a piece of fuel there that's attracting the electrons there, and maybe the fuel is breaking apart as well, once you break it apart enough that they can find a new partner, that the electrons can be in an even lower energy state, then the burning process starts. Just like throwing a rock off of the top of a mountain, once you start, it's going to go all the way down the mountain. Now this process that I described is called kindling. You have to raise the fuel up to a temperature where the combustion process can start. But as soon as some of these things break apart and rebond with each other, the electrons go into a lower energy state that heats up the products and causes further agitation, which it makes it easier for the next atom beyond what has burned to break down and, and with the oxygen to break down and for the, the combustion to continue to happen. So it's a chemical chain reaction once you start start burning, the heat released continues to allow the activation energy to be overcome, allowing the combustion to continue. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.